All right, uh, we need to talk about something else. I don't know if I can turn that into something. Yeah, okay. Um, casual conversation. Boo! It's been raining a lot. <laughs> Anyway, rugby. There's been a lot of rugby on. Another weekend of a lot of rugby. I have to apologise. You should apologise. To, to you, Tony. To our, Thanks, man. To our listeners on Spotify and wherever else you get your podcast. And to the viewers on YouTube that we, we didn't do the podcast last week because I, right. I was a bit crook. That was my fault. I was ready to go. You I, were ready to go. I you were like, come on, son. Let's do it. Because I'd never watched so much rugby in a whole weekend. I watched far more rugby the weekend before. Yeah. There were, it was a lot to talk about. The Black Ferns, yep. Rusty Erasmus, like, just was everybody's cringeworthy douchebag <laughs> uncle for about six days. The Italians no, I was ready to, to get a win over the Aussies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's, although, I'm looking forward to... Speaking of upsets, I am looking forward to discussing a little bit of Georgia. Yeah, for sure. Georgia! Yes. I, I was trying to sing for a moment there that... Uh, is it Ray Charles? Is it... You know, Georgia. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who Georgia. sings that song? I know the song. Uh, know the the guy's blind. Oh, um, Stevie Wonder. Not Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stevie Wonder, blind, blind singer. I think it's Ray. It's Ray. Ray Charles. It must be Ray Charles. He's okay. blind too. I haven't seen the movie. That's got, what's his face in it? Yeah, Jamie Foxx. Hmm. I'll take your money. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Not Kanye West. Yeah, that was, he did that a little bit. But there was a lot of rugby on. It was. I enjoyed it. For the most part, and to be honest, <laughs> I didn't watch all of it, but I enjoyed what I watched. Fair enough. Well, where do you want to? Where do you want to go? Do you, do we start as we always start with the All Blacks? I would. Can I? We're getting into this episode, but I want to propose an idea you, for next next oh, okay, week. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I reckon we have an international year in review. Okay. And I'm going to give you some categories, and some no, I'm going to come up with the nominations. Okay. And you come up with the, the, winners? the winners okay, on the spot, okay? On the spot, okay. And they might be not your normal kind of categories. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Biggest dick. You know, just the biggest dick energy. Oh, that That's going to be out there. Big dick energy? Who's got the biggest dick energy in world rugby right now? Okay. Yeah? It's nice. gonna, it might be that sort of stuff. Is there anything you want to touch on on a fortnight ago when I was sick? Like I mentioned the Italians beating the Australians, the... Uh, the Welsh had a good win over the Argentinians. We beat the Scots, but it wasn't convincing. There was a big clash of the Titans between the box and the French. I'm probably not algo happy sort of content. Um, I want to talk. Uh, I'd love to talk about from the week before, but the thing I was saddest that we didn't talk about was that incredible, World, probably the best World Cup final of all, of all time, the Black Ferns right. versus England. What an epic encounter that, that game was. itself was just phenomenal. Oh my god! World Cup finals aren't supposed to be that. No, insane. no. You, I wasn't. You know, after you left, I took a shit. That was like <laughs> <laughs> epic, epic. I had a lot of nervous pose to get rid of. <laughs> I, I know we must have been pretty lively because that video essentially lost its monetization value from YouTube. YouTube was like, nah. yes, because we did a live stream yeah. uh, during that game. Got a bit excited. I got overly excited. Yeah, I blame yeah. you. My videos never get demonetized, so. Well, mine do occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. There's the connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was an epic game, and I just couldn't. Just let's just quickly touch on that last line out. I just couldn't believe that I was saying in the live stream they've got to throw a man up, or throw a woman up. Yeah, I did, didn't I? And, yeah, 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 and yeah. they did, and oh, what a moment! Probably my happiest rugby moment of the year. Yeah. Second place would have been uh, South Africa, Australia, uh, South Africa, New Zealand. Um, at uh, Cape Town. Was it Cape Town or Joburg? No, uh, at Alice Park. So yeah, Joburg. That, that was, that was, that was pretty epic good. too. But um, from the weekend, we've got to start with the draw really, don't we? Start with the draw, 25 all. England dead and buried with 10 minutes to go. Bodie gets himself a yellow. He does. Uh, I. They say that a draw is like kissing your sister. Which I've always found very upsetting. I don't have a sister, so... I do have a sister, and um, I, I'd rather lose a game of rugby. <laughs> <laughs> I love my sister very much, but... Not enough to give her a big smooch. What are we talking about? Kiss on the cheek, or are we doing no, a bash? I don't, I don't think we're talking kiss like, on the cheek. I, like, I'd lose a World Cup final if it was like, pass your sister, or <laughs> lose a World Cup final. I'd be like, yep. sorry, New Zealand. I just can't do that. You can't take one for the team. Yeah, I can't, we can't do that, Emily. <laughs> this is not going to work. Yeah. Uh, you know, but that that was up there with kissing your sister because that was so wildly unsatisfying. Yeah, that was like, pretty deflating. As it was, like we New Zealanders, as everybody knows, and 
it it just felt so much like a loss and it was it was sad in a lot of ways because it was one of our better performances of the whole year yeah, for, for sure. 70 minutes i was so impressed with the way we were keeping them out on yeah, our exactly. line yeah. our goal line dig was incredible they but hadn't really fired it was almost like a reversal of that semi-final and that we'd taken a couple of good chances and kept yeah. them remarkably quiet yeah just didn't give them an inch yeah until we gave them every fucking inch on the field <laughs> <laughs> it was just it was crazy to watch yeah it was really impressive to see how attacking and offensively minded the english team can be when they let when loose. they need to yeah, they yeah. they just let it go obviously they had a a man a man advantage but even with the man advantage that was you usually I think impressive rugby they've done the maths on it people smarter than me and i think it's usually around about seven points you can see during the yellow card. I think You're that's right. the average. Depends on if you're home and away and whatnot. I think between five and seven. So for us to concede as many as we did was certainly uh, Bonkers. exceptional. Yeah. Bonkers. And it was just like, it was just like I remember thinking uh, once uh, Buddy went off I was like, and they scored from that and I was like, oh, okay, look, consolation stuff here. Yeah. yeah. They're going to get close. They're going to make the scoreline look a bit more respectable, yeah. but we should still hang on. Yeah, Fozzie yeah. will have a few harder questions than he would have in the final press, man, uh, final yes. press head, but um, I was, I'm still, like, I was thinking to myself before that game, this game is going to, de- I'll either give them a D or a C from this. Right. It'll be a pass or a fail, and it's a fail for me for the year. They, you know, they won the, uh, you know, the rugby championship. Rugby championship. Yeah. They've, you know, they've got a few of their trophies that they need to get just by getting one win. They, yeah. I think they've still got whatever trophy they go for. Is it like Edmunds, the Edmund Shield or whatever it is with, who, with England? Yeah, that little yeah, shield I, or whatever that's called. I don't know. I so they, they have their, they obviously lost the Stein Legacy series. Still got the Blazers like Cup, but for me, it's just so worrying in terms of. What, how they look when they're under the pump, yeah, you know, how they crumble to pieces when things aren't going well. Like, great all black teams, you know, weather the storm, yeah, and these guys just absolutely fall apart, they're That's like right. soggy paper in a storm. That's right, like, they never. And I, I think Mwanga played really well during that game, but when things get hard, mm. when big plays need to be, you know, put upon them, I know there's a lot of defensive stuff that happens in that, but. Like he just doesn't step up and and and, and control things and, mm. and and calm it down. I know I would have liked. I know uh, I would also also would have liked to see them kill the game from that last three minutes rather than the kicker back. I him. did see a lot of talk blaming TJ for kicking the ball away. The whole argument being two minutes to go. We've got a man down. Hang on to the ball. When but, Youngs did the kick just before, I was like, "That's yeah, such that's the that, dumbest that's, yeah. kick." But to be honest, with the penalty count as high as it was and rugby not being what it was like 10 years ago where you could legit run down like three minutes, yeah, I feel like two minutes in the modern game, I think it's too long. Especially yeah. when there was almost 30 penalties in that game. I don't think we would have gone through two minutes without somehow uh, sealing off or giving away a penalty. I can't see it because... In, in other leagues we've been watching for like the last couple of years, even a minute, a minute to just kill with the way the ref makes you use the ball. Yeah. The ref is looking for you to just infringe anywhere. And I backed TJ. I was like, kick the ball. I mean, maybe you go for a bit more distance, but it was a bit within, within like 20 seconds of making the kick, we're back on our goal line. Like if you're going to make the kick, you need a goal. You need, a, you need a front up on defense yeah, and at least make them work for it. But it we got really too passive. Didn't yeah. We, we got so passive. Yeah. It was, so I, I know TJ is getting the blame for the kick, but Jesus, you got to be better than that. Yeah. 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 I don't think TJ played pretty particularly. He played so well the week before, week before when he yeah. came on for Scotland. Yeah. But, and it was funny the week before it was just kind of an opposite of the, the game before we played really well at the very beginning and, and very well at the That's very right. end of the Scotland game, it. but played like dog shit for the 60 minutes in between basically. Right. Yeah. And this game we started well again, Yeah. played really well until 70 minutes. When Bodie got that over, I was like 25, six, that's a bit of an up you to, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to, to, to England. Like, you know, we're still the little brother of England for whatever reason. Not maybe not rugby, but just for us. We like yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. You know, twenty nineteen. Stick that up your jacksies and smoke yeah, it. Yeah, at least. But boy, oh boy, mm. my jacksie got filled. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah. I'm sorry about talking about filling my jacksie. <sighs> maybe this one's gonna get demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, YouTube. 
Uh, and it was it was just like that kind of feeling of being a kid and like getting a ice cream from Mr. Whippy. And then he drives off and you walk away with it and you trip over something and, and just, just drops right it. on the ground. Yeah. Right. Oh. What do you make of England's decision to to kick out at the death? Pussy. <laughs> Super puss. <laughs> I mean, I can look at it with the same actually. That's the a same big... angle for the the TJ kick in that England are back in their own half. They were concerned about giving away a penalty in their own half because they know Geordie Barrett can slot anything. But they... I mean, look how much ground they made the previous time they were what in their own half. What are they playing for? Like, what are they playing for? Are they playing? It's a it's a test match essentially, but you know, it's not the World Cup. They're not trying to qualify for anything. Mm. They're not trying to. Get to extra time, like... Even if you lose it from there in New England, you, you, you're still moral kind of victors for coming back as well as you did, right? percent And, like, they had all the momentum in the world yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, the All Blacks defence, like you said, was passive. It was all over the place. And uh, who... Was it 13 men we were down to at that stage? Because TJ had just taken a big... It was, like, yeah, one yeah. thing off the field. I think... I didn't see it, but I saw someone on maybe Twitter say that Havili had come on. So maybe we were still at 14. So Havili had come on. Who was at halfback? I don't think we had a halfback. All oh, right, so Moanga might have stepped up. And Maybe, sort of, I don't know. But it would have been I feel like the All Blacks were all at sea and we were there for the taking. Yeah, we were absolutely there for the taking. And the, the, talk, the talk is crowd, fair enough to them. Yeah. They, well, I'm sure they're pretty chuffed with what happened at the end of the day, but they boot him. Yeah. They boot him to crap and, you know, fair play. Like, that's what we wanted. I wanted to see... And like three and a half minutes of frantic, crazy ass rugby. Like, if, if, if it's, it's just it's, such an anticlimax. If it's a reverse situation, if it's Eden Park, the All Blacks have just come back from you the dead. What they do? Do the All Blacks kick that ball? I don't think so. Oh no! Yeah, I was, I was about to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to say. I was about to go bullshit. <laughs> no, because I, I, I can't see an All Blacks ever. team just going like, "All right, we'll just take the draw." Yeah, exactly. Because freaking All Blacks teams are like. There's been so many games over the years in the Stein Lager series or whatever tournament they're playing and when they're up by 15 points or they're up by a unassailable lead yeah. and they just refuse to stop playing even in like... Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know it's, it's slightly different when it being a draw and whatnot but like... You know, it's there to be. It's there to be won especially yeah. you got the, you're the man the of They yeah, just cut us to bits just two minutes prior. Absolutely. Why not just go on? Did, yeah. And uh, Eddie Jones said, because I heard on the commentary saying it must have been must have been called from the coach, mm. but Eddie Jones said it was a player's call. So, Is that right? Okay. Yeah, he said, I trust my players. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was very disappointing, um, but uh, some if New good, Zealand nice win that, If New Zealand win that, Fozzie comes back home. All the talk about him being crap is kind of gone. We've re- got a bit of redemption, but that... That capitulation just keeps the shadow of the doubt. Yeah, like, there was a capitulation against Japan as well. Mm. They were... They, they were a moment of magic away from completely boiling us over. Yeah. Japan. Japan. Yeah, you know, like... Who like, England had flogged the week before. Well, I mean, admittedly yeah. at home instead of in Japan, but still. Yeah, I don't know, like... I just, there's just been so many occasions where you've been wanting the All Blacks to step up to the mark in, in key moments, mm. and they've just fallen apart mm. against Argentina. They against, don't look against like Ireland. A team like the All Blacks of old, who are just going to find a way to get it done. The they look like a team who are going to find a way to somehow snatch defeat or away from it or something. Yeah, I remember All Blacks, the All Blacks. <laughs> I don't think it's a problem with talent. There's a lot of talent in the squad, but. Mm. I remember the All Blacks with, you know, obviously Richie and Dan and Ma'a and Conrad and all these great players. They'd go down a man quite mm. often in those air series and they'd almost lift. Yeah. They'd lift through that period, but they just folded. Like, yeah. you know, and the, the the bench were just pretty crap yeah. across the board. Well, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a pretty disappointing way to finish and um, a disappointing year. Like, what is it? Eight wins... Four losses, one draw. Mm. That's a crap for all black team. team. Yeah, it's not the best. That's a crap for all black team. And we were this close, this close to having Razor. If you know who needs to get Razor, you know who needs to get Razor. Wales. <laughs> if I was Wales, I'd be getting my Welsh Valley checkbook out. I'd be sending the pot round, and I would just, I would love spoon the crap out of it to get everybody 
chip in to give just just a just say to raise whatever you want, mate. Just give Pivak the payout and bring in the razor. Well, Wales yeah. did lose 13-12 to the Georgians. Ooh. Admittedly, it was a Welsh team which uh, you know they, they don't played, even, don't give them anything. They, they, they played, should be they beating a few new guys. Oh, so what? You should be beating Georgia at your home stadium. Seeing as Georgia just the week before had lost to Samoa. <laughs> By a point. <laughs> and Samoa got absolutely pumped by Italy the week before. Yeah. And Italy, who had already beat Wales. Wales, you're dicing with tier two here. Yeah. And it's just, they looked amateurish at yeah. times. Yeah. You know, I feel bad about our win against them. They made us look better. They made us feel better than we were. That's we right. Were. Yeah. The Scots were right in that game with us for a long period of times. And if we weren't too far away from getting another boil over, but... Man, I haven't seen a Wales team look this yeah. shoddy for a long time. Concerning is, I mean, the the Georgians have long been renowned for their scrummaging. Yeah. But, and I, Georgia's not a team that I follow anywhere near as much as I should, but... In I've, recent, always, I've always said that about you. I was like, where's you the don't Georgia, watch enough, where's, where's, where's your Georgian content? Where's the Georgian content? <laughs> the, the Georgians, in more recent years, from what I've seen to them, the scrummaging isn't what it used to be. Oh, but really? the backs are a lot better yeah, than they right. used to be. So we did see a lot of that in this game. But then the Georgian replacement front rowers came on and absolutely just destroyed. That last, that last scrum. There, there were two scrums. The previous yeah. scrum was down the Georgian end. And then they win themselves a penalty, get themselves up the field. And then there's a knock-on. And that knock-on leads to that second scrum, which is the one you're talking about. Yeah. That's what leads to the penalty, which the, the that loses the game. Yeah, or yeah. wins the game from a Georgian point of view. What a scrum. And you can't be getting bossed around like that. Who are the... So there's Pivak, Gethin Jenkins, he must be the forwards coach. And was it yeah, Stephen Jones? Stephen Jones, yeah. Get rid of all of them. Gethin Jenkins was a great player. Great players don't mean they're great coaches. He's... The, I've, the, the, their forwards look soft. Do you think... Wales they look way too... They look does, like, does Pivak need to go? Get him out! Now! Like, he is just not giving you the results you want to. Yeah. He will be... Like, if they don't get that win in South Africa, which is a massive achievement, yeah, you know, uh, it, that is a very, very good achievement. But, God, the sun shines on a dog's ass some days as well. Yeah. Like, other than that, there was just... There's, yeah. It's just been rank. I remember... Rank, the, rank. I love... I'm irritated about it. I love the Welsh. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. They deserve a better rugby team. They yeah. really do. Yeah. Oh, I got, I got heated. I, I remember... Getting stained! Wales had a really crap year under Pivac. And yeah. then there was talk, oh, he's not the right man. And then the next year, they end up winning the Six Nations. But that was a year where a lot of Wales opponents had cards against them. Like, Wales just had this knack of getting oh, opponents yeah. red carded. Yeah. And everyone was going, Wales are crap. But they're just <laughs> really lucky with these cards. And he, I was like, nah, man. Like, I think that was... You've still got to do the job. Even if your opponent gets cut. I've seen plenty of teams not capitalize on an opponent's red card or whatever. And Wales, nah, man. Like, they're still... But now the... maybe I'm having to look back and go, maybe they were a bit lucky. Yeah. The top comment on the last, comment, or last podcast we did was... Um, it was just basically like Wales have, have been crap for ages. They won the Six Nations just based on luck and cards. Right. You know, that so I didn't buy it at the time, but maybe, maybe it was a big factor. Just maybe papered it, over the cracks. Maybe it papered over the cracks. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Get a razor, guys. Get a razor and shake the crap out of this one. Razor needs a chance at international level, folks. Apparently, England's talking Razor, to him. Razor, if you. Um, they, to succeed Eddie? Who's that? Sorry. No, just England. Oh, yeah. I think. He, He's in demand. He's the best coach in the world at the moment, in my, for my money. Like, obviously, he's never coached. That's a big call. He's it's never a big coached call. Because he's only he's coached in his own his... backyard. He's only coached Canterbury, um, in New Zealand under 20s. And, um, coach Barbarian still went over the All Blacks 15. That's true. You know, this weekend, which is, you know, they yeah. play, that was actually very entertaining. Yeah, girl tip for tat game, that one. Yeah. I did watch that one. But, um, Old titty tatty, that one. Yeah, but no, good Georgians, honestly. I'm giving you my thumbs up because. I'm giving you your was... thumbs up. And I'm also going to give you a Georgian fist. <laughs> it was a massive win. Did you see the post match for that? I just fisted the, the captain. The captain was just like world rugby. Give us like you know UFC fighters sometimes oh, are like yeah, yeah. calling out like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, um, what's exactly. the name Dana White like Dana White. <laughs> give me give me this title <laughs> shot. I need the title shot. Basically, fifty k baby. Georgia, Georgia were like we ain't won the World Cup, but like come on world rugby, we need something. Man. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I love that. I wish our post match interviews were a little bit more like fight. 
yeah. you know. Yeah, shower curtains. I'm six nice. foot with a mean right <laughs> hook. I make nails look soft. <laughs> You know, that's that's yeah. the, that was Dan Hooker. Oh, really? A couple of weeks ago, he finally got a win. Thank God. Oh, nice. Israel, um, no, I say Israel Falau lost. No, Israel Adesanya lost. Adesanya. I didn't see it. I saw it. <sighs> it's great fight. He was really dominating. Had him on skates at the end of round one, and then and then uh, he was out out pointing him the whole thing, just fighting supremely well. Kept him on the ground. This is real. <laughs> Get on there. He's not a wrestler, but I wrestled him for most of round three. Was up in the score cards, three rounds to one. Had it, you know, just two minutes to get through. But um, old Pereira, got he's, he's, he's got he's got the nuclear option. Mm. So uh, it didn't get knocked. That's the controversy. Some people say it was a little bit of an early stoppage, but right. some people say, well, he's not going to get CT from it. Yeah, uh, he got uh, stopped on his feet. Okay, so. that's the thing about the UFC is like even if you're the equivalent of a rugby like 40 points to nil down you've got the instant like 100 point winner yeah that's 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 combat yeah, yeah it's combat sports yeah you know it's deontay wilder the bronze bomber you're yeah. like if you've got the nuclear option you're never david, out of it you're never david, fully out of yeah, it yeah david to mike tyson yeah all, all these guys you know yeah anyway uh that was a bit of a tangent on uh, some ufc content which i'm sure everybody was really into ireland and australia you watched that one ah oh, <laughs> s- sympathy to a continues Australia. Australia is good. Australia. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm going to say this. They are going to cause some... Australia are arsy tinny bastards. <laughs> you reckon World Cup they're going to cause World, some havoc? World Cup they're going to cause some havoc. Because if if they can get their discipline right... Yeah, God, honestly, such a question. Honestly, they've got, they've got the discipline of a dog in heat at the moment. They're, <laughs> they're just... They just Did shocking. You seal the neck rolls. Yeah, and say, like they, they just can't stop going for it. It was like they practiced it all week. Oh, it was unbelievable. Uh, but if they get that sorted, which is something you think that it's a big thing. It's funny by the end, and Slipper was just like looking in his place. Oh, <laughs> God. oh come on. Yeah, uh, yeah. But if they can get that sorted, they look great. Yeah. They pushed France right to the brink. Yep. I was. You know, France had to pull it out of their asses to win that one. Yeah. And then they pushed the number one team right to the bloody brink too. Yep. And then shit the bet against the team they should should beat. True. That's, that's just where the Aussies are at right now. Yeah, hundred percent. But I'm I I'm sticking with Rennie. Like I've said okay. that he, I'm I'm pretty big for. Unlike getting, Pivak, you can see the light with with Dave. Yeah. Um, and I think it was actually a very good performance from them. Right. I think uh, the Irish won't be overly impressed with how they played. They, they were missing Sexton, who was a really late withdrawal. Late to the point where the guy who took over, Jack Crowley, was wearing an embroidered... You know, they put the players' names mm-hmm. on it. It literally said Jonathan Sexton. He was literally oh, really? wearing Jonathan Sexton's jersey. That's how late... And that's a big jersey to fill. Yeah. And he, apparently he's been, like... I don't know if it's universally, but one Irish like newspaper pundit gave this guy all kinds of shit. Like, you didn't run the show properly, son. Like, comparing... Oh, really? Comparing I this guy who's on like a second cap to Johnny Sexton. He didn't play that badly. I mean, he, just, he played alright. Yeah, he played alright. He, 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 right. he, it was, he was a tough st- game. He was steady. It was, it was yeah. a tough game. And, and Australia were trying to bounce back yeah. from that game in Little Italy. They Australia are world class. I think they're the best shit team in the world. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're so. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I think they could. They're cause, entertaining. You can literally watch any game. Australia goes into you yeah. can see them go into a game against Samoa and like geez they could lose this and you see them go, go into Paris like shit they could win this like yeah. you just don't know exactly I'd feel more comfortable if I was them playing France than playing Japan right you know like for whatever reason they have they are obviously got frailties they're going to bring their level up or bring their level down depending and, on who they're playing and they've reckon. had what a horror run of, of injuries of injuries they um, really have I think I mean I know every team's got them but I swear theirs is the worst injury list of all the teams this year yeah by far I think yeah. you know and they if they can if the they're arsy they're, yeah. they're arsy like 2015 World Cup like nobody kind of expected them to go that far yeah. like thought they might get out of the pools Bloody knock out the host. That's right. You know, you know, get do have a bit of arsy luck against a team they should beat Scotland. Yeah, 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 like yeah. they were. I know Scotland's a very good team now, and they, um, I think that's still a very very competitive game. But in 2015, they mm. were definitely expected to beat Scotland. Yeah, they just got through by a refereeing call, which was controversial to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. But um, yeah, and Ireland at the moment, like, 
I guess they're just doing what the proper good teams do, is that, because Ireland didn't play their best rugby by any means. When, like Gibson Park has when, been on fire all season. He was a bit just seemingly out of sorts. Yeah. They've lost six, and they're having to play this young fellow who's not really played a lot of test rugby. Yeah. And they still find a way to get a win. That's just what, like, a, a team that plays less than 100% still manages to get a win over a fired-up Aussie team. If The thing I'd be concerned about if I was Ireland is if, so if you're thinking about the All Blacks and Bowden Barrett gets a career, not a career, a tournament, and, tournament yeah. ending injury like Dan Carter got in 2011, yeah. you know, in the round robins of the World Cup, yeah. you think, okay, we've got Moanga, okay, we've yeah. got other pivots who can come in. Yeah, still, yeah, come yeah, in yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Peter Fiera could do yeah. a job. Sexton goes down. The yeah. whole team is just... They're all just like, we don't have sex, and what do yeah, we do? What do we yeah, do? What do we do? Yeah, yeah. Like, they've obviously still got the win. Yeah. But there's. He seems like he's. The heart and soul of that team yeah. is like a freaking 69 year old man. Yeah. Like, it's. It know, is reminiscent of when we were so reliant on Carter. Like, Carter wasn't the same age level, but like 2011, even though we won it, like, Cruden wasn't proven. Slade was Cruden kind was, of there, thereabouts. Cruden was a real youngster. Yeah. And Colin Slade was kind of a bit like, oh, shit, I really don't want Colin Slade leading me into a World Very Cup good final. NPC player. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's like Joey Carberry. Like, Joey Carberry's a good player, but he's not Jonathan yeah. Sexton. I mean, no one's saying he is, but it's just like... Who's who's the Irish beaver? Oh, man. Who would they bring in? It'd be like Carberry. Maybe, Carberry would have to play a couple of maybe, games. Maybe Ross Byrne, who came in and kicked that... That pen, yeah. the win the winning penalty, yeah. like he he's a guy who was maligned. They were yeah they were kind of bringing him in as like maybe a potential successor, and then the couple of times he got starts, Ireland lost, and everyone's like oh fuck this guy like he's not he's not got what it takes to run and like he's good for Leinster but he can't run Ireland properly yeah, so yeah, yeah he's probably the he's the guy he's the guy right but no he he kicked that penalty pretty well yeah. Big pressure penalty. Big pressure penalty. You nailed it. Big boy energy. Yeah. That's yeah. one that, like, going into a World Cup, that's experience in the bank. Like, you've done it before, son. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's golden. Mm. That really is golden. But, yeah, I feel like they needed to play. Probably a good thing for, to get through a decent level test match without um, six, sure. six pants. I yeah. think that, yeah, the fact that Sexton didn't play, the fact that the Aussies gave them a real good run right to death. If, if, if they'd won by 40 points, they don't gain as much out of that yeah. game than what they did by having a, a real tough run to end their year. No, I yeah. think that's, for both teams, that's good experience in the bank. 100%. 100%. Where did, what did our friends, the South Africans, get up to on the weekend? I didn't watch it. Well, they... I, I watched the week before. They had played, well you know, two tough games against number one and number two in the world and come away with narrow losses. They went and played this resurgent Italy side. Yeah, and was at it, was half it? time it was close. I forget how many points it was, like two or five, or well, it was so within a score at half time. Yeah. And the crowd in Italy, it was at a football ground. I forget where it was, um, and it was like a real ferocious crowd, like really getting into it. And second half, South Africa just unleashed the beast, man. Oh, yeah. They absolutely not Tim Dye No, no, not him, but just man, sixty three twenty one. Wow. They scored some good tries. They scored some mall tries. Their back scored some tries. Billy LaRue wow. was running the back line. They had Marnie Lubbock, who's this guy who's been playing the house down for the Stormers, and he's never been getting the crack. They insist on playing all these other guys. What about my guy that I thought, uh, I've forgotten his name now, uh, reminded me of Sparkles, but fabulous. Willems, huh? Yeah. Is that the, the tall, lanky guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He started at 10, but then... No, no, no. Guy, no, no. The guy, he, was, he, was, he played on the wing. He played a little bit in the rugby championship. Was that Willems, huh? Young guy, I think he was playing on day. Oh, Keenan Moody. Yeah, no, he wasn't playing. He I like playing. the look of him. I yeah, no, he, he's a good him. looking player. No, yeah, yeah, but yeah. their other winger, Kurtley Aaron. When I said by the way, Sparkles McFabulous is is Ralph Lau. Yeah, yeah, big lanky, good in the air, great in the air. Yeah, great at gobbling those eyeballs. <laughs> exactly. But um, nah, man, <laughs> Kurtley Aaron, the winger for South Africa, individually clocked up more run meters than yeah. the entire Italian I'm squad. Sorry, in that I'm sorry, I didn't listen to what you said. I just started saying. Gobbling the balls, and then I immediately started thinking of cradling the balls, working the shafts, swallowing the gravy. <laughs> and then while you were talking, you got distracted. I got distracted. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Currently, Aaron's had a good game. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a... Colby injured himself, but he scored a try. I, and... Aaron's here and Colby, I think. Two wee the... wingers. Wee wingers, yeah. They're, they're, they're mirror, mirror men, really, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, was there any uh, red cards or anything like that? I had, a, I had a take on the red card from the week before in the. Um, France game. With oh, Dupont. yeah, Dupont's red card. Yeah, so 
every like when you're taught to catch the ball, like you know, you keep your eyes on the ball, yeah, focus on the ball, like try and get under the ball, you know, like and you're not taught to like freaking. If you can get in the air and you can like when you're taught and you're a kid, you don't teach to jump. Just secure yourself mm. and bring it down and like take it, you know. And Dupont looked like he was doing that perfectly right. under the ball, but then like a freaking jumping jackal from nowhere just comes jumps so on top of you, jumps on top of you, clips you in the shoulder, and then like on his head. I understand he it's a red yeah. card by the rules, but every day of the week. But there's no intent there. He's yeah. doing what a rugby player does, trying to catch a ball under it. And like, not in a realistic position to catch it. For me, in terms of human beings, that human being is far more realistic than somebody jumping three meters in the air yeah. to soar over them. Yeah. So, like, I just think... I think by not jumping, you pretty much put yourself, by the rules, like you say, yeah, in right. a position where you're guilty. But doesn't jump... So jumping players clashing in the air? I think if they both jump and they're both at a relatively even height for the ball and, and Colby lands on his head, I don't think he gets red. Because well, it would be... Oh, it's an even And contest. Colby's got so much more of a run-up against that. And he, and yeah, then, the man stationary is almost at a disadvantage. The man who's like in a better position to catch the ball, mm. like is like three meter, like three steps to the side just to get under it. Yeah. He can't get the leverage to get up there. Yeah, and even tough. if he gets up there half the way and the other guy still gets a meter above him, clips him, downs you. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It's such a dodgy area. What do you say? Like, someone's going to break their neck. We don't want to fucking... Mm. We don't want to see it. I know at some um, levels of the, the youth game, they don't allow jumping. You're not allowed to jump to catch the ball because really? they, don't, they don't want, like at like on the high school level or, or below, they don't want people jumping up because the risk is It's spectacular. Just, I love it. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Looks it's amazing. a huge part of the game. And having that, having someone like a Freddie Stewart for England who's just yeah, safe as houses under the ball yeah. is gold. Like yeah. it's it's literally worth probably thousands of dollars yeah. to somebody's contract to have that skill. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's tough. Basically, I think by not jumping, you put yourself in a position where you've got to look after him. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Anyway, it was just it was just a thought that I had yeah. from the week. Sorry, I'm, I'm unloading all my thoughts from the week before. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, South Africa put them to the sword, basically. Some of the tries towards the end, you look at Italy go, come on, Italy. Last week, I also, when it comes to South Africa, I wanted to have a heart-to-heart with the people of South Africa. I did. Like, I love South Africans. I really do. Okay. Uh, all the South Africans that I've met have just been passionate, fun, Quirky, love a beer, love, love a rugby. beer, love their rugby, love a huge fucking amount of meat, right? Yeah. A giant amount, like an obscene amount, you yeah. know. Like, and I like all of those things, yes. you know, and always get on with them very, very well. But oh, just, I, I was almost, I've been on Twitter recently, and I was just been like, Elon, burn this thing to the ground, <laughs> so I just don't have to put up with this shit anymore. Like, I'm not even just talking about the rusty stuff, but just the amount. It, Rugby is full of calls. Mm. We all got... Like, I went away from that game of the weekend with Raynal going, mate, just shut up. Mm. Like, put your... Put your whistle uh, away your from, whistle away from yeah. Like, going both ways. Yeah, I didn't yeah, really yeah, feel yeah. like you favoured us or favoured yeah. them. But you, we have opinions. Ask yeah. your dad. Yeah. You know, about referees. My but dad, like, my dad doesn't like referees. There is no... There is no world rugby um, conspiracy against South Africa. Like, there isn't. And we all watch things through our own perspective. And as fans... We are always going to side with, you know, our own prerogative, which yeah. is our team winning. We're going to naturally overlook the things that the referee fit, uh, misses that benefit us, and we're going to hawk in like a freaking, yeah. like an eagle spotting something shiny in the distance when it comes to the things against us. Yeah, for things sure. against us for sure. And South Africa's a big population, a big passionate population, and they get themselves into like the sort of eco chamber of just surrounding themselves with other South Africans, and it just. It was just getting crazy toxic. And it I listened to the commentary and it was just awful. Like like th- that commentary was just painful to listen to. I was like the France South Africa game. Mm. I was like these guys were just so incredibly one-eyed. Like I and, and there was a, this was in the context of you could say like New Zealand commentators like that. The Australians mm. certainly can be like that. I know New Zealanders can be like that sometimes. But I was listening to it with all these uh, commentaries are based in these countries yeah. and it stuck out like a honeymooner's cock when it came to the South Africans how one-eyed it was mm. and then they've got the biggest I used to like this guy but he's one of my big time douchebags of the year right now is Russi Erasmus right. you know like shut up 
put your phone away, you are making an absolute twat of yourself, and you're embarrassing the whole country. Like, you know when you're, you know, like, you and I have had, you know, loud dads on the mm-hmm. sideline, and you're just like, you, when they're going off, you're like, just, yeah, just leave it. Just, you, I just, let, I want, the, the earth is swallowing <laughs> me up right exactly. now. Yeah, yeah. The, that's how I would have felt, if I, and I think there were a lot of people doing that as well, right. and there were a lot of South Africans, I'm, I think I'm generalizing the whole group of them right now, but, they were, there were a lot of South Africans going, like, come on, guys. But there was just a lot of toxicity and also fueled by those absolute wank rags at freaking... Yes, they rugby <laughs> mag. Yes, they rugby mag. Oh, God, they wind me up. Yeah. Anyway, so rant over. You had, you said to me, we, we yeah. kind of briefly discussed this. I'm going to get so... Oh, look at that. Look at all that hate appearing below us in the comment section. Um, but not hate, just strong opinions. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of you had an abstract idea yeah, around I've been all trying stuff. to get my my head around the whole the whole Rassi thing and how people kind of I don't want to say blindly, but people are like fully a lot of people are fully behind him, like nah, what he's doing is absolutely right. Like he's pointing out decisions. When you say a lot of people, a lot of South Africans, yes. Well, some fans, yeah, for sure. They're saying... You're so much more on the feeds where I'm just like, <laughs> jump into the fire pit. I was trying to put... Diplomatically. <laughs> I was trying to put into my mind, what's a situation where there's a New Zealand figure, like a rugby figure, who does something which is kind of controversial when New Zealand fans would be like, no, that's right. And the rest of the world is kind of like, that's a bit shit. And the closest example, yeah. and it doesn't quite fit, but Richie McCaw. Like Richie McCaw, back when he was playing, yeah. New Zealand fans, and especially Cantabrians, love yes. the guy, think he's a great competitor, Hated and, him and, and didn't, like, didn't really think, like, he's a fucking cheat, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the rest of the, I remember going into like a test series or whatever, there would be news articles from like foreign media saying, Richie McCaw is such a cheat, he's ruining the game. And yeah. New Zealand fans would react, I feel like, in a kind of similar way, maybe not yeah. with the same social media way, but yeah, the same point. way, like, how dare you, like, we stand behind our guy, like, he's not cheating, this is just the way the game is played. He's doing what's right. Now, it doesn't, doesn't fit exactly right, but the, I feel like the, 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 the the two-sided nature of it is like it's a similar way in that it's so divisive and that two people can look at the exact same thing and see something totally different like i feel like richie mccaw is generally yeah, right. more well well respected and russie's maybe losing i mean a lot of people loved him after the world cup right he turned oh, south that's... africa around and then he's this great coach yeah great and then coach. now people are kind of taking a step back like oh shit i don't like him anymore i don't think richie ever was as disliked as what Rassi is getting from uh, foreign, like yeah. non-South African media right now. But I do feel like Richie was divisive and that people could look at him one way or totally another, just depending on which side of the fence you're on. I think it's, in terms of what you're saying, like there's, there's definitely a, um, a lot of validity into the fact that whether somebody's on your side or not on your side, that's going to uh, determine the way you view them, whether that's favorable or not yeah. favorable. Uh, and obviously if somebody's on advocating for a position that you hold you're going to be like yes you know it's like Trump fans you know yeah. people who like you know Donald Trump and people who don't yeah but in terms of what's happening here I think the distinction between Richie McCaw mm. and also Rusty Erasmus is Richie McCaw was doing this on a rugby field yeah he was one of the best players in the world like you can't doubt that but he was also he's one of the best players in every aspect of the game like mm. whether in the tackle at the breakdown you know like leading aside mm. the psychology of a game and also part of it was working the refs mm. understanding where the refs were That's uh part you of know his job. yeah it was part of his job and he was the world's best at it so the guy who was the best at it was going to be able to push it to its absolute limit every time so as a somebody who was not a fan of his mm. you're like this guy, he's getting, you know, he's, lying, murder, yeah. he's lying on the other side of the ruck all day because he knew that the ref, you know, yeah. was okay with it. Or he could, you know, you know, jackal the ball when he wasn't supporting his body weight or yeah. something like that. He just, he kind of knew what he exactly needed to do. Yeah. And he knew the rules incredibly well. Yeah. You know, to a really high degree. Whereas Rusty Erasmus is sitting on his fucking toilet, taking a massive shit, going, oh, I found this clip of something, you know, of this guy getting taken out after a box kick. Or, and like, and you're making a smarmy, totally transparent, you're not fooling anyone, you just look like a complete wank rag. You know, like... Could like, you not you, make the argument that he's doing what Richie was doing in terms of putting... Well, he's taking the spotlight off his own players who've lost. He's taking the spotlight off 
No. Do you know Jacques Ninaba? No, he's Because just... Jacques like, South African fans are like New Zealand fans, that they're very unforgiving of a loss. And Rossi is directing that heat from Jacques Ninaba towards if, the if officials. If you just look at the reaction in terms of everybody else who's watching, like, South Africa have never been a hated side. They're, they're, a, they're, a, feared. Team, a, they're a feared team. Yeah. They're notoriously, incredibly physical. They don't give you an inch at hard. any time. Yeah, incredibly hard. hard, incredibly big men. Very skillful, very tactically astute. You know, brilliant, brilliant rugby nation for in a, in a lot of ways. But in terms of what is actually, you know, what he's actually doing to this highly respected team, he's turning them into the bad guys. Mm. There was so, like... Man, I would have loved it. Like, I love South Africa. I really do. Go check out my freaking Why Are They So Special video. I made a video. Put it you put it somewhere. The thing is, this is on your, your channel. channel. Oh, okay. your, channel. Your, <laughs> your, your channel needs some content. No, the, the algo's not liking me at the moment. Um, but it, in terms of, um, you know, how special they are as a team and, like, you know, with where they were in apartheid and how it, you know, the whole nation came together in 95. There's a beautiful love story around it. Bloody Hollywood made a film about it, but the world would have absolutely jizzed all over it if Italy got up in the weekend. Everyone would have loved it. Just mm. after the week that actually happened, you know what would have been? It would have been, you know, people would have loved it if there was a horrible refereeing call. <laughs> that win Italy's that win, favor. win Italy's favor, because it just would have been. You know, they're turning themselves into, you know, a team that, you know, not to be, that, that will always be feared, will always be respected, but also just, I don't know. Well, to be fair, the All Blacks are despised in a lot of ways yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just edit out this entire rant of out against South Africa to save myself some headaches. It's not against South Africa. You just don't like the way Russ is handling himself. I don't, but I don't like the way Russ is handling himself. I don't like um, the crazy amount of excuses just like not been able to take it on the chin on social media and certain and certain factions of the australia of the south african media how they're handling it i think they're better than that i think the common south african is better than that i think we got a bit like that after 2007 we got pretty rabbit like if social media had been a thing in 2007 yeah. like wayne barnes got death uh, threats and yeah 100 percent. so okay. we've, we've we've got our own history with we do know, have going a bit history. over the line i'm gonna okay I was totally on that. Yeah, I was me as well. I was a very uh, angry Kiwi. First, I was, if I had Twitter, Jesus, no, no, I would no, no, have been. No, one of my first ever groups I ever belonged to on Facebook was I Hate Wayne Barnes. Yeah, 2000. And like, it had to be like, he was so new, it had to be 2007 quarterfinal coach. Right. You know, that was one of the first, and I think he's a great referee now, but yeah. like, there were two, like, in terms of that game, we're not talking about some random international in the November series, okay? We're talking about 24 years of agony and heartache in a game that we all expected to win, that we really felt like we were on top of, that we were winning, that was lost by two calls. One, a pretty Jeez, dodgy... Justifying it. Pretty dodgy... Uh, yeah, exactly. It was super <laughs> hypocritical. But it was a World Cup knockout game with so all you, that history. You, think, you like, think if Wayne Barnes makes those calls in an autumn international... Then um, the, the, the liberal it. outrages and his, no, his, no, absolutely not. Like, uh, I thought Raynal's call against Australia at the end of the Bledisloe Cup mm. game was pretty bullshit. I, yeah. felt, I really felt for him then. I don't like him as a co as a referee. Yeah, I feel like he's overly technical. Mm. Like he calls everything that yeah, you could yeah. possibly ever call. Why? Where I where I liked um more referees like Nigel Owens who would Let understand flow. understand yeah. the game a little bit more. Mm. Like understand the, where the game's going. Mm. But, yeah, so it just in terms of that game, the context does matter, mm. you know? But, yeah, that was that was my most brutal ever refereeing decision I've ever had in my life was that forward pass. Yeah. You know, but you can't was, have that every week, right? You can't no, have that same, that, that kind of You can't outrage. have that, but feeling like that. Yeah. It's feeling like that. It is a little bit like that right now. I yeah. notice sometimes when I put up a video, there'll be people already preempting comments saying, oh, people are going to have a whinge about this or that or the other. But I mean, whinging about referees is nothing new, but it is taking it to another level when the when the director of rugby gets in on it. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, the South African bigwigs are not happy with him. No. He's a bit of a maverick. I don't, just don't think they need him. Well, like, do they need him from a rugby perspective? I think Ooh. he's got a rugby brain like no other. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's brilliant. Obviously a brilliant guy. Mm. 
but he's just I honestly think part of what he's doing is deflecting from Nidaba who's got a pretty average record and keeping his players away he's keeping it's all about Rassi nobody's saying like oh you need to drop this player I need to drop that player nobody's saying Nidaba needs to get the sack it's just everyone's talking about Rassi he's a genius there you go yeah that's your take he's playing he's playing the, the, the distraction game playing the distraction game oh I don't know yeah, well, maybe, maybe he is, but maybe he's just like I. Once, or sometimes I do. Um, I am in a war of captains sometimes on right. rugby field when like there's been three or four calls that have been gone against their team yeah. and someone's been yellow carded unfairly or whatever, and it's just been something that's just been misinterpreted. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of plainly see when you see the replays that some yeah. errors were made, and they go, and the referee says, "That's my decision. It's been made," and they go. Oh, Whereas I feel like I would be like, but you're wrong, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. I'm kind of in awe of that. So, but he, he is, he's doing that. He's like yeah. holding on to that beyond the game, mm. you know, like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just thought it was pretty, one of the, probably the worst display of, um, sportsmanship. Sp- yeah. Probably one of the worst displays of sportsmanship from an international coach I've ever seen. I'd say like, just in terms of just like, letting it go moving on and like he's keeping it I don't think it's helping his team I, th- why is all the South African rugby bosses going you bring us basically bring this into disrepute you know yeah I don't know I know your fan base is all, all enough if you do rugby if you're a rugby a YouTuber your, you, 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 your big viewership is going to be South Africa so there is a temptation to be like oh, I love you South Africa everything's great everything mm. you say is great but you know uh, you got to call a spade a spade sometimes, and it's, it's just got it's just got a little bit sickening for me. Well, now he's got Ben, another one. <laughs> it's funny though, isn't it? Oh god. Anyway, that's my rant. That's I think we had a robust discussion around. Yeah. That. Mm. So, uh, fixtures for next week. Well, there's two other games first. Oh shit! Scotland smashed Argentina, fifty-two twenty-nine. Yes. Argentina at one point. They must know each other incredibly well. Those two. Those at one point, Argentina get a red card, Uh and then they get a yellow card. Yeah. And then within a minute of getting that yellow card, they get another yellow card. So down to twelve men. Down to twelve men. Wow. Fifteen v twelve. Who do you think scores next? Argentina. Argentina. I swear Scotland are the only team who are like, well, we're up by three players. Let's we're just up, give us they're Zeta almost try. playing a football team. <laughs> <laughs> and yet they conceded a try. I mean, they still won the game really I handily. I really wish that there was another colour when you had three play- players off the field. Yeah. And we could call it the rainbow. Oh, you know? yeah, true. Yeah. Ah. Orange. Orange. Somewhere <laughs> in the middle. Yeah. Oh, and Lavanini was one of the guys who got one of the oh, yellows as well. Man. It was brutal. I haven't, I didn't, I haven't watched the highlights of that one. Yeah, no. was it? Was it like a cannonball tackle or what? Ah, uh, jeez. One of the, the yellows was like a maul and a clean out, and then the, um, the, a maul, like a oh, right. dragging down a maul, oh, yeah. and then uh, I think the red card. What was the red card? I think it was just like a. Oh, it was a swing and arm. And it was a kind of bicep, but they didn't do biceps the biceps are fine. They didn't do the whole biceps. Biceps are fine. Are fine. Biceps were not fine in that game. Only Scotland can do the biceps. If they're on the <laughs> if they're on the receiving end of the bicep, then that's a that's a red. Some biceps are hard. It was Marcus Krimmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, um, yeah, Scotland, big win, big win. Okay, well done, Scotland. That's it. I I love watching that. I I. It was hard to watch. It's hard to watch all the rugby. Yes. And but I actually enjoyed that series in the um, rugby, not the rugby championship. This, in, in the, the July July. Series. Yeah, yeah. No, that was a really. There are two teams that really go at it. Yeah, I played a lot. And yeah. This year, it's like the fourth time, so it's finished two two. So no, are they good. up? Could they play each other in a knockout game oh, at the World Cup? Can't remember. You've just focused on the really crap side of the draw. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other one was France thirty five, Japan seventeen. That was this morning, so work day, uh, two o'clock in the morning. I think it was. Oh, I watched it belatedly this morning. Yeah. France looked solid without being spectacular, mm-hmm. and Japan scored a couple of nice tries. So happy J- days. Japan aren't getting any wins, but. At a World Cup, you never know. I think if they keep on plugging away, they keep on investing money. I like the idea of like um, Japan being like the money ball team of mm. the world, like just finding any loose unit um, professionals who mm. haven't quite 
succeeded in their own country yeah. and just like just a team of mavericks who just get and that's on. what they've got a few of the guys like mm-hmm. Lovis Lovis Scarf and he couldn't mm-hmm. make it. I think he got a call up once for South Africa and never got yeah. capped ended up playing in Japan they yeah. got Warner Dunes who think he's like a son of a wallaby like they got a bunch of guys like that they got um, son Craig of a Miller wallaby. who's like a former Highlander you're getting a, better with your um, Japan rugby knowledge a lot of those guys I actually knew from the Sunwolves, but I feel like I'm losing touch because some of the guys who are coming through are too young to I, have played I for the Sunwolves. I've watched some of your film, your films, your these films, films, epic, um, yes, films that you put out on YouTube. Um, you do a bit on MLR, and I always yeah. thought that was funny. I was like, okay, Ella the Nehemano Scudder and and Andy. Yeah. I was about to say Andy Dalton, Andy uh, Ellis. He plays yeah. for them. And maybe a couple other guys who are just wrapping up their careers. Wouldn't the Japanese league be a bit more of a compelling league to follow? Yeah, the I might have to, especially now that the Americans aren't going to be in the World Cup. The old sleeping giant can keep on snoozing. They lost to Portugal. Well, they didn't lose to Portugal. They drew with Portugal, but because their previous two games against Hong Kong and Kenya had a poorer points difference than Portugal, they ended up going out. Portugal were happy and they said obrigado we'll take that exactly that's the only Portuguese I know so well done Portugal making it to a World Cup for only the second time I don't have a Portugal jersey I wanted America to get through so I got an American jersey you're going to have to get one I have to get myself a Portuguese jersey but um level sports yeah, I don't think they sell Portugal so you're I'll have to, to find one somewhere I'm sure you can buy one somewhere somewhere are there yeah. ones you just can't some places like I think it was like Romania I don't have Romania either. Romania's rugby store only ships to like Romania. So you, but there aren't there like people you can ship to within a country who Probably. can ship to you. I'll but have to find a way. It's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Yeah, basically. I'm, I'm stingy. I don't want to pay that much. But um, some use your one of your super chat money. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Because um, they will say that buy yourself another rugby jersey. Yeah. Buy yourself another rugby jersey. I end up going on my mortgage. <laughs> um. It's hard to feel, I mean, I, I wanted USA to go through purely from a selfish point of view because I know the American players, it's an English speaking country, so like I can see more of their interviews, uh, some of the, the YouTube fan base is based in the States, um, you know, I just wanted America to go through, I've got an American jersey, I'll follow the MLR, like, I've got a lot invested in America, but that doesn't mean I'm not happy for Portugal, like, that's great for rugby that another another country makes it. It sounds like you're not happy for Portugal. <laughs> I didn't want them to make it, absolutely. But the fact that another when country I'm makes it When I'm watching the Old Legs lose, I'm not like, oh, I'm happy for a, I'm really happy for Well, Argentina. I'm not as invested in the US as I am. Yeah, you the made Legs, it. But well, you made a big big call. And like, I think I, I think your feelings are probably reflected in world rugby. Yeah, brain. for sure. Because they're just... America's just been chosen as a host for the next, uh, <laughs> next, next uh, are they? World Cup. Like after Australia. So, but they just get natural hosting rights. Uh, yeah. Like Qatar. Yeah. Speaking of bad guys, oh yeah. Oh, hui, hui, hui. Well, um, before we touch it's on football, we um, cheers a beer to Qatar. Can't do this in Qatar; it's illegal. Well, it is. Um, what was I going to say? America. You oh, win. they had three chances. Okay. They had they had a game against Uruguay. Whoever wins goes to the World Cup. America lost. Yeah. Uruguay went through. So then they had a playoff against Chile. Whoever wins goes through, and they should have won, oh, but they God. lost. And then they had this final repertoire. I was like, if you can't get done three times, then you, you probably don't deserve to make it. No. Sadly. No, they don't. Well, what's their problem? Like, um, I've only watched the highlights of the game. Yeah. When they're actually playing, what is it stylistically that they're doing? Is it? I think part of it's the selections. They've got Gary Gold as the coach. And I don't think he... He's got this weird mix of... Like, he, he picks the guys from abroad who are the big name players. But then they only get to come into the squad very late so I feel like he doesn't get that much time to prep them them whereas you look at the Chilean team that he lost to they're kind of like what the Hawares were and that they're South American like SLAR their their version of the MLR basically 90% of their squad plays in that one team so it's a team of lesser known guys but because they all play rugby together all the time their cohesion level is like through the roof so so we don't have one of the world's best um, female teams uh, the male team didn't make it. Canada didn't make it, mm. and um, the US didn't make it. That's right. Then that's a couple of massive markets yeah, man. that they're missing. I'm quite excited about the South America, though. Yeah, for you sure. Know. I mean, it's great to see growth. Now. The fact that Portugal's got a team that can beat America is legit awesome. Yeah, I just I just don't know anything about them. 
What's Spain like? No Spain idea. had qualified, but they got kicked out because they had an ineligible oh, player. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, that's the second time they've done that. Freaking Spaniards. Get your Get paperwork your in order. Paperwork sorted. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You've been watching the football? Uh, I've been actually spending more time going into sort of like um, rabbit holes of like Qatar corruption. Okay. You know, that's what the yo algo is giving me at the moment. Right. And I'm like, all these deaths of the... The workers. And I feel like kind of morally, like, do I watch this tournament? Like, mm. you know, the whole thing around, like, you know, I know it's an Islamic country and all that sort of thing, but I don't think any religion should give you the right to be bigoted about homosexuality. Um, so that's kind of weird. It's, a gay, it's illegal to be gay over there. It's, you can't... Well, you, fine, you can't have a drink, whatever. But then all the incredible amounts of death and like um, how they treated the workers over there okay. during this period. It's some pretty dark stuff. Really? And also the I way, looked, so the way they actually got the tournament was very corrupt, wildly right? corrupt. Yeah, like yeah. so transparently FIFA's, corrupt. I mean, World Rugby gets some stick. But, I think but even Sia that... Blatter was like, ah, oh, we kind of screwed the pooch there. Yeah. And like they really did. Like it's just like the country had zero, like a very tiny population, incredibly wealthy. It's mm-hmm. on a massive oil and gas reserve, mm. like the world's biggest. Um, tiny population. Basically, everyone gets like an absurd salary just for living there wow you know if you're just a resident of there you you, you make shite tons of money because it's that it has more money to, than what it does but it had no infrastructure right zero infrastructure so it's been a good reason to build it all has it so the but they've built it all just on the backs of bangladeshis nepalese and six thousand people like the working conditions were so bad like it's one of the hottest places in the world working throughout the day and like just getting whipped into things and they were they had this law that um, uh, it was a, it was called like a family friendly law that bachelors weren't allowed to live in any areas where family zones were. Okay. But they narrowed it down to basically just bachelors that were foreign born somehow. Basically, okay. so they they shipped basically all the workers into these sort of slum like environments, right? And uh, which were just wildly unsanitary and, and locked them into these weird contracts that they didn't understand oh, right. and just killed. Them. Killed a bunch of them, six thousand of them, and Is that really right. Six thousand people yeah, died. Jesus. Six thousand workers died over that period, and it's just, it's gonna be like a, I'm a football fan, and um, it's sad because it's such a great game, a beautiful, the beautiful game, mm. but it's just been built on a absolute pile of bodies, and I kind of want to watch it. Because I love sport. I yeah. Love it, love it. Anyway, this is a rugby podcast. I watched the highlights of Ecuador against Qatar. <laughs> and I wanted Qatar to lose. I was like, sod those guys. Mm. Like, I never want the host nation to lose. I never want this little guy to lose. I remember supporting South Africa back when they yeah, uh, had 100%. the football World Cup. I was like, come on, guys. You don't, don't want to be the first host to not make yeah, it out of the group stages. Because Japan, you, Ecuador, you stuck Japan in- and Korea, the previous one, everyone would be like, oh, they're not going to make it out of the pools. And they yeah. both did. And it was a great story. Korea ended up making like the quarterfinals or something, or the semis. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they, I don't I'm really t- watch soccer anymore. Yeah, yeah but it's, this is the time to watch, isn't I it? I suppose. I was actually thinking that this is... What ex- simulation does my head in? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, um... Yeah, it is. It when is you it. see some guy rolling around on the floor... Not just, just rolling like, once, like... Yeah, and just the look of agony on their face, and I'm just like... Yeah, it's so different on. to what you're used to watching. That's right. You yeah, see well, some guy with blood pouring on his face, yeah, so he's I'm just been knocked out, he's like, put me back in, coach, I can keep going. Yeah, exactly, and part of the thing... It's actually happening a little bit more where people... Like, go, quite, someone cops, they like, feel something on Nowadays, their face. Nowadays, definitely, we've seen in this autumn... Anybody who thinks they've been hit in the head absolutely stays down until the TMO has looked at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. So there is, that aspect is, well, I think we've talked about that yeah. before. But traditionally, it's like, show no pain. Yeah. You know, like, uh, have a good poker face when you're in a, sh- a crap ton of pain. And that's the same in, you know, combat sports. It's like, right. I think someone's just broken my rib. But Don't just, show any just weakness. Just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, You know, you know, whereas it's the complete polar opposite in the wonderful game of football. Upcoming fixtures this weekend, England against South Africa. South Africa will be without all of their England and France-based players. So they're going to have to do it purely on their guys based in South Africa, I believe. It's going to say just the Irks. Just the Irks, which is still a pretty big contingent of players. but Yeah, that'd be a good game then. Well, I think um, I think it was going to be a good game either way, but I think that gives that, so that South African squad a, 
a big G up to say that we can do it mm. even without these these big stars. Important for them to end the tour with a win, really, because they've only had the one win over Italy. Mm. They've lost the other two. So if they go one from four, if they lose to England, Ireland, so and France, it's not a great. All the one. other players have been pulled back. The, the Premiership players and the top fourteen players. Because it's outside the test window. But the Premiership players from England. Oh, well, the English players get an exemption, of course. Ah, oh, it's stacking the deck in your favour, isn't it? Well, just like the South African players should be playing for their URC clubs, but they get an exemption, so... Uh, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. You don't do any favours for the foreigners. Right, knowing the groundsmen, basically. Mm-hmm. Basically, yeah. Um, that's interesting. It's a bit... I don't know. I don't actually think it's good for either side. Like, um, I know it's not... Actually, it's it's fine because it's it's not from the perspective of the uh, national rugby bodies. It's actually the perspective of the clubs, aren't they? Mm. They're like, want to bring their players back. Well, they're, they're contracted, yeah. And so. then the ones who are domestic, they've had to have... There's an agreement between like yeah. South African rugby and the USC clubs. But it, or if I rugby. was a, if I was a player, I'd be like, I'm not chuffed that you know some of the best players in their team are able to play. Mm. I want to test myself against the best. It's so like when we played Wales last year. Remember, we gave them a hiding, and they didn't have all of their overseas based players. So it's never really as good a look. And then you got to think it's Wales against Australia. Both of those teams could really use a win. Yeah, I think I think I think Wales will lose though. You reckon? <laughs> yeah, I think they're crap. Uh, <laughs> I really don't think maybe, maybe this is the match where Pivak needs to keep his job, oh. and he's going to get a win. He's going to get a win to keep and his Australia job. And Australia are notorious for losing games they should win. Uh, but yeah, I think yeah, final game of the of the tour. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, I still think Wales. I don't think Wales. Are, they don't. They've got talent over there. They do. They're, Jack Morgan yeah, at the yeah. weekend played a blinder against Georgia, but. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I I pick odds for that one. Player of the year. There's been some awards. Josh Van der Fleer. It's good. Johannesburg's see finest. It's cool. You got me before I could get into it. So I was about to say, good to see a South African won it. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> sorry, we, Ireland. Whenever I see Irish people getting so pissed off about that, I have a wee chuckle because yeah. I know it's a joke. But then when someone's like, "Oh, you bloody Kiwi stealing all yeah. the Ireland talent," I'm like. Look how many Samoan flags are exactly. outside. I grew up with a guy called Fying a Funk Hanuka. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, we was, I don't know, I think I would have cut this out of the podcast, but over the weekend it was just Samoan flags. Like, crazy, the Rugby World, Rugby League World, World, World Cup, Cup final, final was on, so uh, the streets of West Auckland and probably other parts of Auckland. Definitely South Auckland. Definitely South Auckland have Far just been like, here, every third car. And I'm not exaggerating, has a Samoan flag. And it's kind of awesome. It's awesome, yeah. And not just one flag. Yeah, like four <laughs> flags. You see like six flags. Yeah. Right? Like everywhere, like, and then there's like the guy's driving, he's holding a massive flag. flag. Yeah. Going down the, it's, yeah. It's been some, there's been some sights. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. there's been some Tongan flags as well, just to kind of counterbalance the Samoan well, flags. When the, with, I saw one car with Tongan and Samoan flags on it. Well, I think the Tongans are pretty psyched about the fact that there's been another um, island nation that's done particularly well. But there right. was like this in the last World Cup as well. There was Tongan flags everywhere yeah, right. when they made it to the semi. And they agonizingly lost that yeah, game. Yeah. You know? Have you seen, did you see the footage of any of those games? Like, Ericsson Stadium, uh, Mount Smart, sorry. You're showing your age with that one. Yeah, Mount Smart, when they played uh, New Zealand, which is in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, it was all so, red. Oh, yeah. New Zealand versus Tonga was just red. decked out in yeah. red. And then whenever that was their home stadium, and it was just incredibly yeah, yeah. like the atmosphere was nuts yeah like yeah really yeah really back, when, stuff. back when that was on my kids used to go swimming to swimming lessons near somewhere near mount like it was in penrose so yeah, yeah, yeah. there was one street that i just drove down and literally every house had dozens of time flags yeah big it's deal. literally a bigger deal than the rugby yeah much bigger deal much bigger rugby. not yeah. comparable sadly they tried to kind of steal that thunder when they had the All Blacks play Tong or something like yeah. that. And, and it was just like, yeah, nobody showed up. No. Because it was a 100-point game. They love the league. They really do. Because they're competitive in the league. Well, because they're letting their... Their top players They're play. letting their top players play, yeah. like, even if they've played a test here and there. As yeah. soon as their top players... Like, a lot of their top players... As soon as their top players were shunned, were, like, didn't make a squad, they could just go, I'll play for Samoa then. Yeah. I'll play for Tonga then. And then... There were so many of those players doing that, that a number of their 
real top players that would be selected for Australia and New Zealand or Great Britain or whoever would, would be like, yeah, I want to play with them. I want to play for my home nation. And just yeah. the this organic natural groundswell of these little island nations becoming yeah. incredibly powerful. And, and like, it would be like, um, what what would be an incredible... Charles uh, Piertel yeah. playing for Tonga. You yeah. know, like Charles Piertel, Sparkles McFabulous. Well, it's because he's doing, they're doing, they're a doing bit that now. They're, they're, they've tried to take that aspect of the eligibility all from league and bring it to union i think for that exact purpose the countries which don't like it believe it or not there are some that don't like it are the countries like chile yeah. who are like look we're just trying to get on the scene uh, yeah. and we've just invested all this money in growing our local talent and you guys are just getting a bunch of former all blacks to come and play for you that's bullshit no i think it's good i think it's good like Let's have a mindset of abundance rather than a mindset of scarcity. And like, you know, iron sharpens iron. So like, if you want to be the best, you want to play the best. You want to play the best as much as you possibly can. So if we can get some sort of like rivalry between the South Pacific nations and, you know, the South American nations, like they if they're at the same level for a long time and they like different, very different parts of the world, but like, well, actually not that far. Actually, nice. They're not that. They're, Just the corner. That's the next big rivalry: South America versus South uh, South Pacific Islands. Like that. That could be cool. That could be dope ass. Like embrace it. Go for it. Try and beat the likes out of beat the nuts off some old All Blacks. Like put your freaking nuts on the line, Chile. <laughs> Do it. I'm really going after everyone today, aren't I? Uh, so yeah, Josh Friend, the Player of the Year. Um, um, and Capuazzo, what? the Italian, got breakthrough player. Ruby Tui, also breakthrough player, even though she's 27. She's breakthrough in uh, 15s. And uh, uh, Roy DeMont gets player of the year for the women's 15s. Wayne she, Smith what gets to um, coach of the year. Oh, Porsche didn't win. Right. I think DeMont's like the captain. Yeah, she's yeah. the 10. Yeah, right. Like, she's always going to win. And she won the World Cup. Like, yeah, pretty well, impressive. What kind of World Cup winning and, uh, fly half the, does and not none of the, win? And now the English girls got to look in? you got to win the World Cup. Poor girls. Wayne Smith wins Coach of the Year I, ahead I, of um, Fabien Gaultier. And if Andy you've made Carroll. it this far into the pod, you can probably handle us talking a little bit of women's rugby. The thing that I was so excited about the fact that we won that World Cup, I just had a feeling in my bones that some, we were going to pull something out. I really did. I said it at one of the earlier pods, didn't mm-hmm. I? I was back in the black ferns. Yeah. And, like, it was, it was a magic tournament. It was great. But it was a little bit sad, like... Uh, I never root for English teams, but I root for the English football team for whatever reason. Don't okay. know why. Because they always lose. Uh, well, the, what did they say? The was it? Um, who said it? Uh, it was a famous football player said, "Football's a game where you play for ninety minutes and then England lose on penalties." Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. They, That's what I when I used to follow football. We're talking a long time ago. We're talking like the what's that? Ericsson, the coach, Sven Goran Ericsson. Yes, yeah, the, the golden Sven generation. Goran Beckham and Gerard and, and Lampard that was, that was and a, Ferdinand and it was Japan. They yeah, they had a pretty good team, man. Yeah, well, they uh, beat Argentina in that tournament. They they won the they got into the Euro final uh, finals a couple of, years ago, right? Last year. Oh, they lost. They lost to Italy um, in mm-hmm. a game that they could have won. They went up in like the first couple of minutes. Right. Pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. I do. And I was in. I was living in England in 2002 and it was a crazy broker. I got swept up and I've been an English football fan ever since. Mm. Um, and I... Did my, you have a team? New Zealand. The, you know, uh, that's my team. Um, I mean, like, a, like domestic football. Though. Oh, Manchester, Manchester City. And I... For, for those pre, of you... Pre-money. Pre-the money. Okay. Pre-the money. Yeah. 100%. Not a fair weather fan. Not a fair... Well, yeah. I don't follow it as religiously as um, I used to. Mm. Uh, I had a point that I was trying to lead to. What was I talking about? Was it good? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> I was leading to a point. Was, and then Women, you got women's rugby. Oh, so that's right. Uh, I felt like the English have done everything right. Yeah. They put a bunch of resource into it. They showed the rest of the world what an incredible product professional women's rugby could be. They worked the, from the moment they lost in twenty seventeen. They were like, "We're just we're not going to do that again." Yeah. They basically didn't lose a game between the ga- between yeah. the tournaments. And then they lost thirty, the and then they lost the final. It was like, it's, it's a little heartbreaking. Mm. It's a little heartbreaking for them. For them. Got a feel for them, but not as much. Not as ha- But I'm happier. Like I'm much happier that the black cap, the black caps, the black fans won. 
Incredible, incredible. But the World Cups continue. Football World Cup. Football World Cup's here. Um, I know you're dying. Oh, we got absolutely smoked in the World Cup final, the rugby the league, women's, women's rugby league World I Cup final. I read the headline, but I didn't see any. I didn't see a single and second of it. I, it's um, a shame to say I can't remember, and I'm not aware of who won the wheelchair rugby league World Cup. Uh, so if you know, put it in the comments, or, or I, maybe I could just Google it. Probably could Google it as soon as we Oh, actually, sorry. Um, one thing I just wanted to. How long have we been going? Probably six hours yeah, like, by the stage. Um, uh, Artie Sevilla not being in the nominations. Oh, a lot of people say even Elizabeth not being in the in the nominations. Yeah. The, uh, Artie Sevilla and those two not even actually making fifteen of the year. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> how did Artie Sevilla carried us on his shoulders? Yeah. You know? And weirdly enough, I actually like I broke down the numbers of all the tier one tests. All that year. doesn't I, sound I, like I, you. You're stats. I know. Yeah. And like Artie's numbers were just stupidly high in like so many categories like fucking run meters and tries and try assists and like wow. he just did everything and it's like i feel like the way they do those nominations is just a bunch of guys get around the beer hey, you reckon you reckon uh yeah it's it's, it's pretty baffling this they, 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 they don't have a like you know they've got the red card framework like was there high was there foul play yes or no uh, was it high danger yes or no like they, they need yeah. to, if you're gonna pick like player of the year and it's gonna mean anything you need to have at least like not just oh, i reckon it was probably that guy yeah exactly i mean josh van der Fleer, likewise when i looked at his numbers his numbers are phenomenal as well yeah. in a different way but, but i think the fact that Artie didn't actually make, make it. it just takes a little bit away from it. I mean, I'm not saying that just make to be... 15 of the year. I mean, Irish fans were saying, oh, it's the same. I don't remember it, but... Because I was obviously running rugby spreadsheets back in yeah. those days. But like when Brian O'Driscoll played for Ireland, they're like, he never got nominated. I don't remember if he ever got nominated or if he Did was... Did he ever win World Rugby Player of the Year? I don't know. I can't remember. But um, they were saying that at least there were years where he was phenomenal, but Ireland was shit, so he didn't yeah. get nominated. So they're saying it's the same logic. Like, New Zealand didn't have a good year, so Artie doesn't get nominated. Ireland have a good year, so they get two players nominated. Yeah, it's funny, eh? Yeah. yeah. DuPont doesn't have his best year, but he still gets a nomination because France were fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But then Aldrich didn't get nominated either, and he was crazy good too, so... It is what it is. And like, I'm definitely looking at it from a Kiwi's perspective. For sure. Yeah. But I mean... The stats, stats don't would, would tell you uh, Artie was at least deserving a, of a nomination. And a, it was weird. They nominated five women but four men for the player of the year. Inclusivity. Just add an extra man. Man it up. You Give win. us a token nomination and we'll at least Are be quiet. Are you actually arguing for the fact that it's unfair on men? In terms I just think it's weird. Why would right, there be yeah. one for one and one for one? Yeah, yeah. It just, it doesn't it's, make sense to me. Are you one of those people that like when things are just not like there's two, 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 one? Yeah, I, I don't understand why you know, there would be... You know, to make... Why is there five women nominated but four men? Couldn't tell you. Exactly. Can tell you, can tell me? I want answers. Give us answers, you bastards. World rugby. <laughs> World rugby. All right, well, that was a podcast. It was. I feel like... Um, I'm actually, you know what? I'm not actually that nervous about my South African rant now because if this is going on my channel, it's not because I haven't posted anything for ages. I think it's gonna no. Be... I'm gonna I'm gonna put a link to it on my channel. <laughs> you want to? I'm gonna I'm gonna put a provocative title. Something Tony like, hates South Africa. Yeah, Tony I rips. love South Africa. I have South African friends, and the ones that I know, they're just like. Oh. You sound like one of those guys like. I've got. I, I, I love gay people. I have <laughs> gay friends. I'm not homophobic. I I do sound like one of those. I do. I do. I do. I do. Oh gosh. Oh well. Good work. Yes. Fabulous stuff. Look, I only watch two games of rugby, but I can talk about rugby for well over an hour. Impressive. I like talking about rugby. I like talking about rugby too. I like talking about rugby with you. There we go. Should we do some more, more live streams? We should. We should for Ruby Tui. We Not should. for Ruby. For April to, <laughs> Ruby Tui's a massive fan. April Tui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, should. Yeah, 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 we yeah. should. I enjoyed it. I think yeah. uh, Lydia enjoyed it as well. Yeah, but she was posing as me. She yeah. gave you money. She did. Bastard. She gave me 70% of $5. The other 30% <laughs> went to Google. <laughs> and, and so it's <laughs> you. Yeah. For hosting the services. Yeah. Thanks, Google. Yeah, thanks, Googs. <laughs> it's very close to a racial slur when you say that. <laughs> yeah, don't get Googles. that wrong. Googles. Alright, folks. Kakidano, hodida.